Hello folks! Welcome to the road trip. Well, first I want to thank you all for being patient with me last week. Um, to say things didn't go to plan would be a desperate lie. So thank you all so much for hanging out and being patient with me as I sort of figure out how school plus an impromptu across country road trip are dealt with. So thanks for that. So what we're doing in today's video is you're gonna get to see, oh, hi hair. You're gonna get to see a little bit of uh, my hair flying in my face. And also. You're gonna get to see a little bit of what I do when I go freestyling. Basically, I'm going around to random thrift stores and estate sales as we toodle our way home so that we can find treasures to list on my website. Come along with me and we are going to check out the countryside. But first... Coffee. Now, no trip to Pennsylvania would be complete without at least stopping in one Goodwill. So I did. And I got some stuff. Now, yeah, it's... Sorry, you're just gonna get the plastic. I'll try and edit that out. I probably won't be able to. Now, I did not get any footage on the inside because I had my tiny human with me, so that always makes it a little bit more interesting. However, she was willing to go from the back to the front with me because this was the only Goodwill that we stopped in that had a proper Halloween section up already. All the others, just nothing. Lame. So what we did was we started at the back. And there I found... These. Now this right here... What? The 1960 vintage sheet. It is a fitted, it does have some elastic fringy shenanigans happening. However, this is one of those that it's in such good condition that I don't really care if there's little fringy bits because the roses are pretty, there's no yellowing, there's no fading, and there's really no pilling or tears that I could find. So for $2.50, I will absolutely take it because it's also not a twin sheet, it is a full-size sheet, which means there's more fabric, which we like. All right, and sheet number two, which I will say, most vintage Disney things I will pick up, especially if their sheets in good condition have bright coloring. Do all of them sell super fast? No, some of them sell better than others, however, I wanted to take a gamble on this one because I thought it was cute. This one has the letters on it, which is very appropriate. Again, this is a $2.50. And I'm thinking this is a 90 sheet because of the coloring. So just another lovely like vintage kids sheet that's good for either folks to upcycle into dresses, which you have seen me do on this channel before, or just generally if you have a set and you're missing one and it completes your set. And the last thing from the Pennsylvania Goodwill is this super fun 60s 70s possibly dress it is absolutely polyester which i will say i pick up rad polyester on occasion i don't try and aim for it because a lot of the times it takes a selective buyer to come along to purchase these and this was the most expensive of the three items that i got there this one was six dollars and 25 cents it's a fun black red and white and in the store it looked navy blue Thanks, fluorescent lighting. But the reason why I grabbed this, one, it's got that super fun mod look. It's got the stripe slightly off center. There's no holes. There's one very small snag that I found as she looks and wonders if there's more. Okay, two very small snags that I have found. The zipper works perfectly, which is always ideal. And the tag. I have zero idea what this tag says it it looks like a p and an lm or a w i have no idea and it's got a little tag that says hand wash which for polyester is unusual but do what the maker says and yeah i picked this one up because it doesn't have any there's no stitches that i have to do she says and then she finds a hole that she might have to sew uh, okay, just kidding. There is one small hole I have to fix. But that's it! Yay! 
I totally didn't see that in the store. So that was the Pennsylvania stop. So we didn't hit up any in Maryland because, well, we were sort of in a rainstorm and couldn't have been bothered. So we kept on going to Virginia, made it just past DC and found a Goodwill along with some food stops so that we could, you know, knock it all out at once. And while we did spend a fair amount of time in there, there was a little bit where I was really hoping this lovely 1980s dress was gonna be a good pick. It was blue, it had roses. I picked it up and no, just no. There's a group of snags on the right-hand side, and then there was a very large two-inch tear where it had very clearly been poorly repaired with just a straight stitch across, not even an attempt at a patch job. And as it was polyester, I just, there was no way. It was one of the larger sizings, so that does make me a little sad, but the dresses were $7.99, and so there was no way that one was coming home with me. It was gonna stay right there. The next piece that I saw, which I had really high hopes for, was this lovely little black and white number. It looked appropriately period. And then I started to feel around and went, hmm, this is an Amazon knockoff. No thanks. How I could tell this is by the texture and by the tag on the back there. And everything about it just read fast fashion crap. So that also stayed there. Now at this point, my husband and daughter had wandered around and they were in a back corner and I was desperately looking for Halloween. And I go back to meet them and then I see this. This entire Goodwill. The only sign of Halloween I've seen. I'm gonna put that back now. Let's keep looking. This is it. Lame. Next up was the CD section because we just needed something to listen to that wasn't Christmas music in my car. And this Goodwill wasn't necessarily one that had music that we would like. So we didn't really have much luck there. But as I was in between CDs, trying desperately to get cell phone service to talk to a friend of mine to help me out, I looked up and saw a blast from the past. I don't know about you, but when I was in high school, Jinko jeans, boy, were they a thing. And they still are. Now, you might be asking yourself, Stephanie, don't you primarily sell vintage clothing? Like pre-1970s? Yes, yes I do. However, you don't really walk away from a profit when you see it. So that's how this happened. Now these are not the most desirable of Jenkos. There's a couple reasons for that. Number one, they're shorts. So they're not as desirable as the actual pants are. And number two, some of the pants or some of the shorts have some seriously detailed back pockets like with big dragons on them. That's not these. These are basically your good old blue wash carpenter Jenko jeans. The reason I picked them up is A, they're 38 and B, there's really nothing terribly wrong with them. And even if they are, they're Jenkos. That normally adds to the value, not detracts from it. And so for, oh, what were they, like $3.49 or something? Hang on, I don't remember how much they are, but I was messaging someone about them. Do, 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 do. They were $3.99. And since they standardly sell anywhere from 25 to 35, sure, why not? I'll pick them up. My kid would like to go to college eventually. So we had stopped for the night in North Carolina, and we had intentionally stopped at one that had a flea market just down the road as we were driving on a Sunday and by golly, there are flea markets on Sunday, even in North Carolina. So we, after we grabbed our obligatory coffees, we made sure to head on over to the flea market, which was a little lackluster. After perusing the exterior, 
flea market section, which was basically a glorified garage sale of terrible shoes and old clothes, and not even good old clothes, like, you know, two or three years ago old clothes. So nothing terribly that I wanted to look at, except for the plethora of toys that my daughter desperately wanted to touch, which, um, no, that's not a thing right now. So we went into building number two, which was, uh, air conditioned isn't the right word for it. It was fanned, we'll call it that. And it definitely was the right spot for us because it was chock full of fun, antiques, dirty things, right up my alley. I love it when things are dirty and cheap. The, the two have to go together. If your stuff is covered in dirt and you're asking a hundred dollars for it, unless it's, you know, a tractor, these two things don't work. So after perusing around a little bit, we did stop into one booth that had a plethora of movie memorabilia. And while I was very tempted by a lot of fun things, the gentleman, as you say, knew exactly what he had. So unfortunately, I didn't really get to take anything from there. And when endeavoring to ask about sewing patterns, was informed that his wife was a quilter and any pattern of fabric that landed in their house never left. I can relate. That's fair. So after having wrapped up at the sad flea market, I then managed to convince my husband to let me stop at a quaint little antique store that I had seen along the route. And by quaint, I mean, when there's things piled up outside, that's a place I want to be. So we pulled over at Trash to Treasures, of which we were greeted with this lovely exterior view, which has their sign and a pile of things outside that are all currently half off. And while there was lots of things that tempted me, including a fun little set of paintings, I opted not to because, well, I don't know where to put them. So if I don't know where to put them, they're not going to come home with me. And upon entering, I am greeted with a fantastic Halloween setup. So I know immediately I'm in a good place. I'm greeted by two lovely people, the Icox. Michael is the manager, and I do greatly apologize I have about a gnat's level of memory to remember his mother's name. They run it together, and they are wonderful, wonderful people. However, I did manage to come away with this adorable red and white gingham hand embroidered apron, which shockingly is only very lightly stained here at the top. And I really think that with a quick soak, I'm gonna be able to get most, if not all of this out. And like I said, all of their prices were really reasonable. So I went into this apron for $4 and while I think, I still haven't decided what I'm gonna do with it yet. I'm probably gonna end up putting it up on my website because um, I have a crap load, crap load of aprons, but it's still to be determined, but very, very sweet. And $4 is absolutely a price that I will pay for aprons. So winner. And then after purchasing this, I had asked them about if they had any sewing patterns or fabrics of which I was greeted with the normal response of, Oh, if he would have only been here a month ago or, or insert your local time, whatever, because they had donated, I think they told me one box, possibly two full of old patterns, not a month before. Now, while I do appreciate their honesty, it does hurt my heart a little because apparently I was not the first to ask this recently. There was someone else prior to me about a week earlier that had also asked a similar question. So what I did was I left them with my card because the level of which they maintain their antique mall is really sort of where if I had an antique mall, that's where I would aim to be at because everything was very visible. All the lighting was fantastic. Everything was priced appropriately and affordably so that even if you don't want to keep everything that you buy from them, you are still going to have a little bit of room. And that's really how I priced things when I had an antique mall. I always try and give people a little bit of room for the uh, local discount. 
So I would absolutely implore you, if you find yourself in Rocky Mount, North Carolina, I'm gonna make sure to put all of their information down below because once I got to talking to them, they are just wonderful people. And really, especially in these times, I find it really necessary to make sure that you're helping one another and really each small business sort of helping each other. So our last stop on 95 took us to Savannah, Georgia, where if you are in the vintage pattern world, even a little, you probably know Vintage For Me Too by Judy and Corey Yates. Now, if you've been on my channel for longer than about 10 minutes, you probably have heard of Judy. She is the one who always provides those lovely images for me in all of my vintage pattern tours. She has an office that I would give my left arm for. It's beautiful. There are so many patterns. It's amazing. So once she found out that we were driving up and down 95, which is actually rare for me because normally we go down 75 for our travels, we arranged a little pandemic friendly meetup. You know, the kind where your face is covered and you're trying to stay far away from people. And while we were at one of our pit stops, she had mentioned that she might have made a little goodie bag for me in the form of two boxes of patterns that are, as she deemed them, too new for her to sell, which is fine. Everyone has their thing. I'm more of a, all the patterns are welcome here. Uh, okay, not as many 80s and 90s. I'm working on it. I'm still going through the 80 pounds of patterns. If you don't know what I'm talking about, when this is done, I'll put it down below so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. And she had told me there were two boxes of patterns that were waiting for me. Well, when we get there, instead it is three large bags of patterns, which I can assume that we're probably in boxes at some point, but these were all patterns that she just doesn't find the uh, time to deal with. She had gotten recently a very large lot of 1920s Ladies Home Journal, so she has other things to deal with right now. And so she asked me if I wanted them, and my answer is yes, because my house clearly isn't full enough of patterns that I need more. Oh well. I would be lying if I were to tell you that it wasn't almost impossible for me to not go through these. Because especially this dude right here, sort of tore. And yeah, I've been wanting to go through these. So let's do that now, shall we? Oh, I should not. Did I learn my lesson from the boxes? Oh, okay, I'll do it just this once. Ooh, don't fall toward me, you daggone thing. Oh, yep, go, go, go! Woo! Don't fall on the floor. I had to do it at least once. Okay. Ooh. Oh, stop it. That's adorable. So the very first thing I notice is this crazy thing. I have no idea what I'm looking at other than I am, a, yeah, I don't know what I'm looking at here, but I know it's cute and I want to know more about it. So I'm gonna have to figure it out. Cute. All right, and then of course, some good transfers. Oh, see, this is what I mean. So here you have the leaflet for the embroidered gingham aprons. She checks, you can cross stitch. And then it tells you how to do it. Cute. Bridesmaid doll lingerie Lou pattern number 107. Oh my. And yeah, of course, these are gonna take time just like everything else. However, it is certainly lovely of her to just, you know, to send them my way. Oh boy, more maternity, excellent. Cause Lord knows, we don't have enough maternity patterns in the planet. And she did warn me there was gonna be a lot of kids and things like that. 
Oh my. That's a thing that's happening. Oh, hey, look. I know exactly who that came from at some point. <laughs> that's the other interesting thing about pattern tellers is eventually we will all get each other's stuff if they leave things like this in it. Oh my goodness. So if you follow me on Instagram, you'll know that I just listed this last night in a one size smaller than this. I think I listed the six, not the eight. So now I'm gonna have two. And if you aren't following me on Instagram, come check me out, join the party. I'd love to have a thousand followers over there too. Or more, why not? It'll be a party. Oh, that one looks real new. Oh, my Lanta. <laughs> Oh, can you see this? No, not like that. The Titanic costumes, friends. Done terribly. I have so many thoughts and feelings. Have you listened to my rant on reproduction patterns yet? If not, when this is over, you should go over there because it's a good time. Oh, at least this is labeled a costume, not a reproduction. Cute. Oh boy. Yep, the Renaissance Costume Collection. Mm-hmm, yeah, sure. She also informed me that she gave me some toddler robes of which she apologized profusely for, but it's fine. We all just kind of set them aside and eventually get to them. Oh, now this is cute. I like the, I like the contrast through here. That would look terrible on me, but I think it's a nice dress. All right, and we'll just go through this bag just to see what we, oh my. Hmm. <laughs> okay, well, that's happening. Oh yeah, there you go. Cute, I have no idea other than the fact that it's got a number written on it. Oh, now those sleeves are something else right there. Oh, that's adorable. That's a romper. It's a backless one. Woo, Lodi, when was this made? 1973, all right. Lots of 60s, lots of, oh, that's a good crossover front. That's pretty cool. 1980s. Oh yeah, 80s, 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 82. Now on to bag two, which does look to be a little bit better. The latest low slung bikini jeans. Pajamas, lots of bus 34s. This actually wasn't the bag I wanted to show you. I wanted to show you the other bag. Oh, well, that was a choice. Someone wrote on that with Sharpie. Oh, well. She wasn't kidding when she said she packed these tightly. There are patterns. Stuffed to the gills. And just like before, folks, I am gonna make sure to put all these up on my website eventually, but just remember, I am one person checking all of this. If there's any of these that you've seen in these videos that you would like me to go to first or make sure I'm checking first because you really want that pattern, please feel free to let me know down in the comments below. I can't possibly know what everyone is looking for. So if I can help you by checking some first, I will happily do so. Because I would like to have a little bit of my house left so that we're not just living in a house of patterns. Because that's currently the state of my house. And then there are sometimes you give preference to the bags as you're going through it because I did notice this one had bust 40s right on the top. Now, I can't possibly make all the clothes and 40 is still a little far away for me. I'm more, like a 44 is a lot easier for me to adjust. A 42 is questionable, but 40 is a little far. So not all the bus 40s am I gonna be keeping and making. A few of them I will, but not all of them. So those will also be going to my website. There's a bus 40 and up section, makes it easier. But this one in particular really popped out to me. There's something about this neckline that I just kind of really enjoy. I don't know how I'd feel about the slimmer skirt. It could work, possibly. So I might be willing to give this one a go. And once again, I just want to give a big shout out to Miss Judy and Corey Yates for compiling these 
three giant bags for me for me to scoot on home with to Florida. Thank you all so very much. Folks, I hope you enjoyed this video today. If you did, go ahead and click that like button. Being sure to push subscribe so you can see further travel vlogs and thrifting endeavors, sewing shenanigans, all with heavy doses of sarcasm, as you have come to expect. And being sure to turn on the bell for post notifications, even though we're about 9,000% sure that it does almost nothing. Thanks so much for watching, folks. See y'all next time. Hello. I should be vaguely in focus. Roll. Okay. Oh God, I don't want to do this. <laughs>